Sharks, the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show, featuring Dan Harsha and Dan Allman. This week's show, we're highlighting the latest in music, life, and we culture. We see each other through different eyes. Yo, 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 this is Dan Harsha, and this is the Guitar Gurus, and with me always is... Dan Alden here. How you doing tonight, bud? Another lovely Tuesday, my friend. Everything is wonderful. Yeah, man. It's yeah. happening, dude. We're here in the studio, chilling out, relaxing, doing our thing. Oh, uh, feels good to be back in the rhythm of, of showtime again. And, yeah. And, wow, man, it's, we're in the dog days of summer, man. I feel like... <laughs> The heat wave is still here. It's just every day. It's just, ugh. It's set back in. All right. Yeah, man. But, you know, that's life as it goes. Man. Yeah. We'll be bitching it's too cold soon enough. <laughs> I know, man. I mean, <laughs> I'm still looking out the one window and I can still see it's daylight out. I know at one point in time it's going to be all nighttime now. So Yeah. That's on the horizon. That Dude, I, I don't like that. Halloween's coming up, so I don't know how different that's going to be this year. That's going to be kind of weird, right? I don't know how that's going to work. Is every kid just going to take a picture of them in their costume and set up a page where people donate candy or uh, an Instagram stream type of operation where you, you virtually trick or treat people? Yeah. And they just send you something, I guess. I yeah. Look, I got four, 1,400 virtual Kit Kats. You know, everybody's going to be taking pictures of the kids' costumes, passing them out. You know, yeah. It's like, oh, Lord. I don't know. I don't know. Dude, that's why I'll be in here in this bunker. I'll be chilling. Actually, yeah, I don't know if we're gonna set up this year, so I don't even know if, if it's even a, if there's even a point to it. I know that's what I'm saying because I don't think anybody's just gonna randomly show up someone's house now to no. knock on the door and say, "Hey, got any candy?" Yeah, that's I got COVID. Not, yeah, that's <laughs> you know definitely not saying? happening. I mean, I'd be scared. Yeah, you know, a, breathe on me with your COVID as you give me your free <laughs> right. candy. I mean, what? Come Here's on, a man. Reese cup and a COVID cola. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wow, dude. Yeah, it's done for, man. Yeah, I, that sucks, man. Everything's so different this year. Uh, came out today, college football's on the brink of collapse. Yeah. Um, a couple conferences aren't playing. Some are, so it's ugly there. They, they're not all unified. Right. It's weird, man. It's just some people, I'm playing football, I'm playing football. I'm like, dude, their kids are in college, man. Right. I get it why pros are playing because they have a choice and they get paid a lot of money and it's a whole different deal. But Yeah, they get paid a lot of money. Right. Colleges get paid a lot of money, but the players do not. Right. It's the most abusive system. It They've really had it is. too good for too long. <laughs> but I don't know. It's just everything's whack, man. And the shows are going to be weird this fall probably. I mean, what's going to happen? I mean. Outdoor shows can go until, I would say, November-ish. Uh, You're pushing it. I mean, maybe. It'll, have to, it'll have to be a daylight. It won't be at night. No. All these will be daytime shows. I mean, that's sure. a, I don't know. Maybe that'll work. Some daytime fall shows. Possibly, it, yeah. If the night falls, it might get crisp. But the tuning of the instruments always gets whack, man. Oh, it's, yeah, there's, You're fighting it. You're fighting it all year. And I think that if, you know, when the season ends outdoors... I think the only people who really have a shot over the winter are your solo acoustic guys or your duos and stuff. There's no, there's no full band stuff going on inside anywhere this winter. I guess. That's my feeling. Right. I mean. I could be wrong. But I think wintertime's a good time for bands to buckle down, get yeah. some get some tightness in recording, and this is a good good opportunity. Yeah. Come out of the gate strong next spring should uh, everything uh, go back to somewhat normal. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's going to be crazy to see how it plays out, man, but... Yeah, I really don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I wish I had answers, but... Right, me too. I'm speculating, and I don't like to do that, but... I just don't see it coming. I see this winter being a pretty big bust for entertainment. Right, I mean, I'm looking still at restaurants or struggling, you yeah. know, um... I don't know, I mean, I, I'm enjoying the no-wait times, so I'll say that. Yeah. I mean... There's a lot of good things about this that have really come around. And put. I mean, if you're willing to take the risk. I mean, I'm doing business lunches, and it seems a couple key restaurants I go to, they're opened up social distancing on the inside. And sure. The weights are not there, so it's like walk in and get service. I mean, it's, right. it's never been a better time. But, I mean, I don't want to let that secret out because everybody will start going again. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, 
It's weird, man. Shit's weird. But um, I'm thirsty, and you know how we do this on the show. That's right. I, I popped up. I popped my first one of the night in honor of last week's guest. So since I'm thirsty, I'm gonna just knock this out. I'm barreling in, man. Barreling in. Barreling it in there. All right. So last week's guest was, of course, Dylan Galvin. He's a solo artist from Southern Maryland. Made the big trip to California about three years ago. Everything was rolling in his world pretty good until COVID hit. So, I mean, that was a great interview last week. I, I highly recommend everybody go back, check it out, re-listen to it. And, and he's thinking about maybe moving back east. So we've got to see how that plays out, too. Yeah. Because that happens, man. I've already reached out to him saying, hey, man, when you come back east, hit me up. That's right. Let's do something. Yeah. So this one's for you, Dylan. Here we go. Nice. Nicely done. Good, good tab crack there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Tastes good. Tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I will join you shortly. All right. Yeah, man. But wow, dude, it's just. I'm just over this year, man. If I could just fall asleep <laughs> and wake up next January, I would be so much happier, man. Yeah. I really don't even believe any of this. Anything. I don't. I don't even know what reality is, man. There's no way this is reality. It's crazy, man. I was reflecting back when I was a kid coming up going, man, I can't wait for the year 2020. Wrong. Yeah. Wrong. Got what you wanted. Yeah, man. You, wow, you, you, man. It got here. So, Dude, you know what's crazy, man? 2019 was such an awesome year. The momentum yeah. was kicking ass. And boom. I, I just thought 2020 was going to be off the hook. Yeah, and the potential was there. Right, I just, wow, man, talk about it. this is like if if if, if the life timeline was a was a NASCAR race, we went into a corner and lost control, Captain. Yeah, and this that was it, man. Took that old right turn on the track there. You ain't supposed to take. <laughs> right, man. We <laughs> she's loose. <laughs> we got loose she's in the corner, loose. and that was it, man. It's sideline, man, and I don't have the recovery time, man. It's gonna be insane. Yeah, it's going to be long coming. It's depressing, man. Yeah, all right. Enough of that. All right, anyway. Cool, dude. So shout out last week. That last week's show was awesome. Everything about it. Dylan had a great interview. I love his little inter- his, his videos he's doing. It's good stuff. Man. It's great, man. Yeah, it's good stuff. But, dude, let's look forward to this week, man. It's episode 84. We got a full show up and two guests tonight, man. So it's actually kind of cool. Yeah. So I teased last week, of course, Justin Taylor, but I, of course, I gotta always gotta have a card in my pocket. We'll get to it in just a minute. So we're gonna open up the show with David Higgins from the Southern Maryland Chronicle for Higgy on the Beat. Uh, Higgy's got a lot of stuff going on in his world. We'll ask him about it in just a moment. But the the Chronicle's website's getting redesigned and it goes live very soon. Yeah. So we're, I'm excited to see that go down. So. Good old Higgy, Higgy <laughs> on the beat, David Higgins, uh, Southern right. Chronicle coming up in just a moment. Um, after that, we're going to do the Island Music Company's Guitar of the Week, and wow, I told you this week's this week's guitar is awesome. It's this that is the Jeff one. Beck Strat, mm. that Strat Street growing, going, yeah. and these are one of the few weeks where I go, wow, it's really cool what I get to do. Yeah, you know when you have an instrument like that, man, wow. It's amazing, man. It's a great thing to be able to get your hands on. Yeah, man. So Island Music's Guitar of the Week is phenomenal. We'll be discussing that in just a, just a little while. It's coming yeah. up. All right. Then after that, Sean Kirkpatrick for the legendary Sean in 60 Seconds segment, man. Yeah, Where will it go this week? We have <laughs> no idea. We never know. And that's the charm. <laughs> so do join us for Sean in 60 Seconds, which is actually a lot longer than that. We just like the name. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we roll, man. That's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to take a quick break, do our standard break, come out of that, come back from the break, and we're going to get first up Gene Quaid, the bass player in the Sam Grow Band. Since they're sideline, not doing shows, he's doing songwriting services at his home studio. So he's going to jump on. We're going to keep it brief. It's going to be a 10-minute call at max yeah. just to get him on, get him to promote his service because I saw his video was out there doing it on facebook last week and i said hey man let's get you on the show tonight man and, and get you some time and let everybody hear what you got going on there you go so it was cool um i sent him a clip that clip i played you last week just to get his take on the tone 
So we can kind of talk about that in like his songwriting service. So I was like, all right, dude, I gave you that clip. What would you suggest I do next? Right. Well, what we'll to kind of do like that so people can kind of get an uh, idea of what his service is like. Yeah. Just, just kind of inside. So I, it's kind of cool how we'll play it out. What do you think about that? I like it, man. Cool. And that'll be Gene Quaid on the phone doing that. Cool. And then after that, our feature guest this week is going to be Justin Taylor, former member of the Sam Grove Ram, but now he's out doing his solo stuff. We're going to check back in with him. Uh, see what's going on in his world and give him some time to plug some events coming up. Man. Yeah, he's he's definitely got a lot of them. He's working hard. Yeah, so I de- definitely got to get him on, man, because he's out there. If he's grinding, I'm going to help him out, get him promoted. Yeah, man. Because it's what you do, man. That's what and, we do. Yeah. And here, any band listening now, if you got your stuff, you want to come on the show, send us a message. Do not wait for me to send you a message. Oh, right. Come on, man. Send messages oh, and let's get you booked. It's timing of the essence, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Dude, and that's going to wrap the show tonight. What do you think? Great show, man. Great show. It's it's uh it's amazing. 84 episodes in. Great freaking guest tonight. Can't wait for all of us to get together when this thing's on and get on there and chat it up. Chat man, it up, man. man. So Right. Well, cool. Give me some soothing tones, and we'll get Mr. Higgins right. on the Southern Maryland Chronicle for Higgy on the Beat, man. Give he'll hook me up. That's right. Southern Maryland Chronicle, Higgy on the Beat. Brought to you by David Higgins and the Southern Maryland Chronicle right here on the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. Good evening, gurus. Hey, Higgy, it's Dan. What's happening, buddy? What's going on, brother? Oh, uh, dude, we're fighting it today, man. The phone system's been hell. Everything's going crazy. But other than that, man, we're awesome, man. How are you? Not bad. Just uh, tired. <laughs> but what's new? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. you, you run a paper, man. I'm, I'm stoked, man. How many hours until the new unveiling? Um, by the time you hear this on Thursday, it should be live. So awesome. wow. we're looking at starting starting to switch it over at 4 a.m. Thursday morning. Oh, that's cool, man. So awesome. I'm hopefully, to uh, the, pl- the plan is to have it completely live by 9 a.m. That's cool, man. Right, I'm man. excited, dude. I'm excited. Congratulations. Yeah, man. man. Congrats. So. It'll be pretty big. I'm just, I'm hoping it's not a flop. <laughs> ah, no, dude, you're good, man. I'm excited for it, man. <laughs> hey, but dude, let, we're running behind. Let's jump into Higgy on the beat. Let's do the 12, 10 out 12 pack sampler, some birthdays, then we'll get out of here, all right? All right. Good evening, Southern Maryland. I'm Dave Higgins for Higgy on the beat, coming to you live from the Southern Maryland Chronicle newsroom. This weekend looks to be in the mid to upper 80s with a slight chance of rain both days. So let's get started with what's on tap this weekend in Southern Maryland with your 10 ounce 12 pack sample. Sampler, courtesy of Lynn Arrow. Right. On Friday, t- 2 p.m., Joseph Morris will be at Perigo Vineyard in Prince Frederick. At Generations Vineyard, the new one in Leonardtown, at 5.30, you got Folk Salad. 6 p.m. over at Gilligan's Pier in Newburgh, you got Split Second. Tiki Bar in Solomon, 6 p.m., you have West Rice Band. And at Buckets Bar and Grill in Lusby, 7 p.m., you got Kayla Chafee and Johnny Brown. Yeah, man, cool. On Saturday, 2 p.m., Patty Reese will be at the Running Hair Vineyard in Prince Frederick. At 8 p.m., you have Three Days of Rain at Toots Bar. And at 9 p.m., Shake the Room will be at Vera's Beach Club in Lusby. Right. On Sunday, on Sunday, sunny Sunday. Right. <laughs> the Running Hair Vineyard in Prince Frederick. You got Ryan Forrester at 1 p.m. Nice. The Ryan out there just getting it done. At the Pier in Solomon's, 2 p.m., you got Billy Breslin. Deanna Dove will be at Dockside Sports Bar and Deal at 3 p.m. At the Bug Eye Grill in Solomon's, you got Kayla Chaffee and Johnny Brown there at 5 p.m. Oh, wow. And 6 p.m. at the Tiki Bar in Solomon's, you got Bad With Names. When going out in public places, please wear your mask when social distancing is not possible. Help keep our restaurants and bars open by abiding by these simple steps to help prevent the spread of COVID. If partaking in adult beverages, please have a DD or plan for an Uber or Lyft. And as always, enjoy and support local music. Yeah, man. Absolutely. That's a hell of a 10-ounce, 12-pack sampler, and that's just the beginning of the week. And check out for the full release Thursday, right? Yep, that's just a little sampler right there. Most places don't really start releasing their stuff until, you know, late Tuesday, early Wednesday. So it doesn't all get in here. So you got to make sure you do check that out Thursday afternoon. Perfect. All right, we have a few local musicians celebrating birthdays this week. All right. On Monday, 
Our buddy Jason Mitchell, Southern Maryland guitarist from Jason Mitchell Music and Lincoln's Day Off, celebrated his birthday. Oh, the Mitch. That's right. Getting a year older, a year older. The Mitch. Yeah, the ah. Mitch. So, did he, did he turn 16 yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I took him to get his learners. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> One Thursday, Southern Maryland folk sing- singer and former uh, uh, co-worker of mine at the Baynet, Joseph Norris. Okay. All right. And Brandy Snyder, Snyder of Tell You Monday. Sure. Happy right. birthday to all of you. And if Happy we missed anybody, please make sure to let me know or let the gurus know so we can give you a shout out. That's right. Sounds Happy awesome. birthday, people. Happy birthday. And that's your weekly wrap on music news. Check me out on Facebook.com forward slash Chiggy on the beat. And as always, follow the Chronicle on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash SOMD Chronicle or Southern Maryland Chronicle.com for all your local, state, and regional news, weather, and sports. And remember, the new site comes out Thursday morning. Perfect, man. I'm excited for it. You won't know that till Thursday night. So, <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll talk about it in the live chat on Premiere, man. Make sure you're there, all right? We'll see how much work I have to do. <laughs> all right, buddy. Yeah. I get it, man. I get it. All right, guys. Have a great all show. Right. All right, Higgy. Take all it right, easy, buddy. All right. Bye. Bye right, bye. He's busy. Busy wow. guy. We got, got him in and out, man. He still took the time for us. So we appreciate that. I'm excited for the release of the, the new site. Oh, it's going to be awesome, dude. Yeah. The promos have been cool. I'm hip. That's David Higgins from the Southern Maryland Chronicle for the famous Hickey on the Beat segment in Southern Maryland. Yeah. You want your band on the 10-ounce 12-pack sampler, make sure you get your information to Lynn Arion. Then Ariana and Dave get together. They select the names, and yeah, I mean, we're, we're all about helping out, man. Just got to let us know, man. That's right. Make some calls. <laughs> Work the phones, Work man. Work the phones. Work the damn phones, son. Uh, you understand what that means? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, dude. All right, dude. It's time transition time. We're going into the Island Music Guitar of the Week. And this week, we got the Fender Jeff Beck Stratocaster and Surf Green. How about that, man? Oh, man. Would I have loved to have seen that thing in person? Dude, it was awesome. This was a weekend where I went, wow. This is why (laughs) I do this stuff, man. You just just don't get a Jeff Beck every once in a while, that the demo. So it was just an awesome, 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 awesome thing. And here we go, dude. There are a few bigger names in the entire guitar world than Jeff Beck. His career spans over 40 years and includes many hits including a number of in influential singles with the Yardbirds. As you can imagine, this is a musician that can play any instrument he chooses, and he chooses the G- Defender Jeff Beck Artist Series Strat. That is right. It's the same guitar you can own and play. You will, you will notice the neck shape is a softer C shape and not as large as deep as Jeff's previous choices. The guitar features Defender Special Design Dual Ceramic, noiseless pickups, a contoured heel for easier, higher access to the registers, and a straight-ahead Strat guitar five-way selector switch, man. How awesome is that? There right? it is, yeah. It, it's, the guitar is beautiful, man. I got to photograph it like I do in my normal style, and wow, dude, they just it pops. Yeah. You know that green on the black background? It just looks good, man. And what a treat to play. The tone's sweet, noiseless pickups. What else can you ask for? Uh, Spurzel locking tuners with, with that beautiful silver aluminum finish it has. Mm. Sets it right off the LSR roller nut. Yeah. Don't see that too often in a lot of guitars. No, no, you don't. Uh, a lot of people don't. Some some say it takes away from tune having a metal nut. Some like that bone. So, but that's Jeff Beck's take on it. He likes it, so it's got to be decent. Yeah. So it's all to everybody's take. You might think that a famous guitarist like Jeff Beck would pick some amazingly figured maple maple and ash but in truth jeff prefers to stay fairly basic with, with the fairly basic strat design once you play it you'll see why he never really asked for anything more though fender did build him a custom one off with a spain, special paint job that honors jeff's love of hot rods we can all all you know that's a one-off though. yeah of course or whatever that's you know. hanging in his house man. yeah that's his guitar yep uh you start with a lightweight other body and then you add the surf green polyurethane finish, and then a three ply white pick guard and three hot dual ceramic noiseless pickups. And you got it, man. If you ever heard Jeff play, you know he really works the tremolo unit hard. So the Artist Series instrument comes with the modern American two point synchronized tremolo for outstanding tuning stability. Bend notes up and 
chords up and down, guitar stays in tune. So I, I got a couple strats with that system on it, dude, and it's, it's all it's awesome. But you got to break your strings in. You got to do all that. Yeah. Stuff. And, and, you know, tune after every song anyway. But story for another day. The original Strat had three single coil pickups, so it was able to produce sounds that no other guitar could deliver. Practically, once players discovered they could lodge the three-position blade um, in, in, in the in-between positions, that's when Fender came out with the five-way selector switch. Yeah. You know, so he was back in that old school doing that. And, dude, I'm telling you, man, that one selecting, the one where it uses the bridge and middle pickup, or I mean the neck and middle pickup, that's the spot. That's the spot on the guitar. Yeah. A lot of strats. That's the spot. You can dial in the, the sweetest clean tune you'll ever know if you're like. That's huh. what I'll say about that. But this Jeff Beck strat was awesome. It's Good. a monster of tone. I put it on my Instagram. and you got to go to the store and try it out, man. If you're a strat guy, just do yourself a favor. Go to the store and demo it. And if you're in the market, you're probably taking it home. I did I was doing some debating if I was going to sell some gear to keep it to my collection, but I was like, dude, I just don't hear no shit from anybody. Yeah. Any of this and that. But damn, dude, it was awesome. It's just awesome. But I fall in love with all of them. But it's there for somebody else to pick up, man. Right. It's just cool, man. It's just really cool. Uh, Leo Fender wasn't afraid to think outside the box when it came to guitar designs. And after all, he was an engineer, not a guitar player. In the 1950s and well into the 70s, the blonde natural maple neck became almost synonymous with Fender guitars. The Jeff Beck Stratocaster comes with a one-piece maple neck with a slightly warming, warmer-sounding rosewood fingerboard with 22 medium jumbo frets. Jeff's personal favorite C-shaped neck, allowing you to really dig into the strings in keeping with the contemporary player preferences that last plain neck is finished in a smooth satin polyurethane finish man. and the neck slides man it just rolls dude and I love Fender Strats with maple maple fingerboards and the song that's playing right now this song was recorded on a Strat with a maple fingerboard and there you go that's the tone you get dude yeah good timing on that right, right, right. check that out yeah exactly and I I swear by that combination I mean I love my maple neck maple fretboard Strat but this road, rosewood fingerboards do add a nice flair, nice touch of tone. And it's just awesome, man. Um, so at a glance, Jeff Beck Artist Series Stratocaster, solid Audler body with a surf green polyurethane finish, three ply white pickguard, three dual coil ceramic noiseless strap pickups, a one piece maple neck with rosewood fingerboard with special C shape for Jeff. That's not a glance, and here's the, the full tech specs. I'm gonna roll for it. You got a solid body a guitar, Stratocaster body shape. It's right handed, six strings, Audler body, urethane finished, surf greens to color, um, a maple with rosewood fingerboard, bolt on neck, C shape, nine and a half inch raise it, radius, rosewood, of course, is the fingerboard material. Again, I clarify that. <laughs> it's got the dot inlays, 22 frets, 25 and a half inch scale length. A 1.6875 inch nut width. Of course, it's the LSR roller nut. You really got to go try it out for yourself to see if it affects tone. I couldn't tell, but I, I'll tell you, my ear's not that fancy where I can tell different tones from different types like that, but it was fun. Uh, it's got the two point synchronized tremolo with stainless steel saddles. It's got the uh, dispersal cast locking tuners. They're really cool. Check out the pictures. And of course, it's got dual coil ceramic noiseless single coil pickups with a volume two tone five way pickup selector switched electronic package. Man, comes with a hard shell case. How about that? Wow. Wow, right? Wow. Hard shell case, made in USA, Jeff Breck, artist Stratocaster. Hot damn, Mr. Alvin. What do you think this instrument costs well, to that point of the program? Okay. Without further uh, research outside of this, other than listening to the facts given to you right here by Mr. Harsha. Right. I'm going to go with $23.99. Wow. Wow, dude. We're about to build a lot of value up in this camp. Oh, shoot. I'm way over. You're a little over, dude. You can have this Jeff Beck Stratocaster signature model made in USA with hard shell case and all that stuff. Surf green finish. For sixteen forty nine ninety nine. Wow, wow, dude! What about that? 
I would have never thought that. Dude, I'm just, we're building value here, and that this says it right there because this is the price. There is the tag. Yep, I see it now. That's unbelievable. It's I a mean, value, dude. Yeah. It's a value. Dude, that's what Fender's known for. I mean, you're getting, you know, mass manufactured inter- instruments with perfect, you know, with great quality, man. I'm not going to say every single one's perfect because yeah. you can't, no one's perfect. perfect no. But you're damn pretty close, man. Man. That's a hell of a price on that guitar. Hell of a price, man. And mm. it's a hell of a guitar. Let's yeah. go over that real That's quick. what I'm saying. Man. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, get down to Island Music. Check out the Guitar of the Week. Surf Green Strat. It, yeah, you can spot it a mile away when you get to the shop. It, it, the color will lead you home. Ah. Get down the middle aisle. You'll know what I mean. Mm. But go demo it out, man. And if you're in the market, you might be taking it home. You might be taking it in because it's awesome, man. It's affordable, too. Affordable. Affordable made in USA instrument, man. Wow. And that is your guitar of the week, sir. Great choice. Wow, dude. It was an awesome show. Awesome, awesome this week. And I can't wait to get back to the store on Friday to get next week's. Yeah. And see what we got, man. Well, thank you to Island Music, as always, for yeah. another lovely guitar of the week. And uh, get down there, man. Check it out. That's right, man. Get down there and check it out. Island music. We played a Maryland. Cool, dude. Hey, we, we, we're on the move. Right? right on the move. Let's get it. Sean in 60 seconds. Give me some soothing tones. We'll Let's transition right into that. Right segment. it out. Here we go. Sean in 60 seconds. Right here on the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. Yeah, man. Phone system's cranking away now, man. I feel good. <laughs> Working like a champ now. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. Dude, this... It's crazy, dude. We had a stern talk with it. Good evening, gurus. Hey, Sean, what's happening, buddy? Hey, man, just uh, trying to hold on to whatever semblance of sanity I have left. Best How about you guys? Luck. Best of luck to you, sir. Well, I got <laughs> one. I got one thing to say about that, and that's this. Best of luck. Ah, <laughs> that uh, there, for, that's what I'm talking about. That one's for you, brother. Uh, that should totally just destroy the last bit of sanity right there. <laughs> Well, what's going on, man? You are you hanging in there or what? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, I'm doing all right. I mean, I got, I got. You know, I'm having fun, I guess, whenever I can. Working, and trying to stay, you know, keep my head above water and everything. Wow. I had the worst morning today. I had to get a tetanus shot. Oh. I got a nail through my hand. Oh. In your hand, not oh. you in your foot. Yeah, it went like right up into my wrist. That was in like Ooh. my whole hand. Like won't even fucking move anymore. Oh my god, dude! Oh, dude, and being a drummer too. <laughs> yeah, it was great. So, so you, are you, what? What's your status right now? Can you move it? Yeah, I can move it a little bit. It's a little hindered, but it's it should be fine. It'll probably heal up, and I'll forget about it. You know, in a couple months or whatever. Yeah, you didn't. You did. You, how close were you to hitting that vein in that wrist? What's that? That big vein in the wrist? Were you close to that thing? Oh no, no, no! It went in through my palm, and ah. then went up into my wrist like it, you can't even see where it went but it, you can see where it's swelling up uh, you did a reverse crucifixion yeah it was it was a lot of fun it was, it was like um it was like one of those uh wolverine saw blades oh no you know what i'm talking about yeah. the x-ray oh, <laughs> oh yeah oh, <laughs> wow man dude. wow dude so um so what were you doing you were on the this happened at the farm right yeah, just this morning. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, walk us through. What were you doing? Uh, well, I was finishing up cleaning up the stalls. It was 1230. I was hungry and, and, and rushing, and I had to open the stall door, and there was there was a nail sticking out on the, on the stall door, and I just slapped my hand right onto it. Oh. <laughs> and it was dark. I couldn't see it, so. Right. Yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, bad, bad moment. Yeah, that <laughs> sucks, um, man. yeah man, I, I'm, I am definitely uh, losing my mind right now. Wow, tetanus shots are fun. Yeah, that was another thing too. Is like I, I like just as working on a horse farm or, or having to give shots to the horses before. It's all like intramuscular stuff that I've done, but I know that you're supposed to get the bubbles out before you give them a shot, right? Right. Well, I definitely heard and felt the bubbles going through, going into my arm. <laughs> wow. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, man. it's just getting better and better. <laughs> Damn. God. Jeez, yeah, man. so that was a lot of fun. And uh, other than that, I guess I have um, 
I'm still working on the new more, more, more set list. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to get a permanent position in that band or not. Apparently, the drummer's uh, wife, I don't know if I already mentioned this, their girlfriend, she's like, if you leave the house, you're out for two weeks. <laughs> what? Like, you're not coming. Like, you see, like, yeah, so apparently he's not allowed to take on that gig. Wow. So they want me to fill in for him. Oh, wow. Well, well get that uh, get that wrist worked up, maybe get in there and get it done. I don't know, man. I don't know. Take care of you can only dude. Take care of you first. Yeah, that's what I've been thinking lately. I think I need to take a break or something. Yeah, that's a sign, man. I mean, fuck a nail through your hands. A sign, God saying, dude, you're not playing drums right now. Calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. But I mean, if I'm not playing drums, I'm working on the farm. And if I'm not working on the farm, then I'm not doing nothing. You know, and I can't just not do nothing. Yeah, that's why they made video games, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I can't even play video games anymore. Uh, left hand or right hand? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I can play them. It's just like I, 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 some of those RPGs I used to love playing, man, they just get to, my, they get to me now because I don't know what the fuck's going on. You know, like uh, everything Diablo. is so surreal. Yeah. I got you, dude. You can always uh, dig up like some Dragon's Lair where it's, you just like press one button at key situations to make the story continue. Oh, there you go. You got that. That's what I'm saying. The stories are so surreal. They're like abstract stories that are kind of alluding to what's going on in the real world today. I'm like, where is the line? That's you know what great. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, you can... Oh, dude, I know what you can do. You can definitely uh, play uh, Guitar Hero or Rocksmith. You can really cheese it up since your shit's broke up. Oh, man. I haven't played Guitar Hero in a while. Oh my god, that that brings up great memories. Guitar Hero 3, it was my shit. Well, there you go, man. You better get play it, man. Holy War is the punishment due. <laughs> get ready to play some blue button, red button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that was a good time. That was, yeah. um, actually, I did a tournament one time in Guitar Hero on Expert. I was really, really way too into that game for a while. Wow. Yeah, that is a wild moment. Jeez. Right? The things you don't know about people. Right. Until you start asking. Until you start asking. Well, shit, dude. I hate to cut you short this week, but we're right up on it. But it's fine, man. I ain't got much interesting to say right now anyway. So. Well, dude, we're going to check in with you next week. See how your hand's doing. Um, you know, try to work on stuff. See what happens. And if not, we'll report on it next week, man. But uh, we wish you nothing but the best, dude. It just sucks. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. I'll definitely have something better for you guys next week. I've been, you know, trying to come up with some stories and stuff like that it just feels like every time i try to do this one story that i really want to tell it's like something comes up and i'm it's like a it's like an omen it feels like like i shouldn't tell this story wow. well dude that, that's the way to tease next week we'll we'll building we the building the intrigue now everybody wants to know what the story is yeah so, oh, we have, so we have to wait till next week man no but seriously dude get your hand taken care of you know what's going on and we'll check in with you next week what do you think yeah, sounds good, guys. Thank you. All right, All right be buddy. good, brother. Take it easy, Sean. All right, guys. All right, See buddy. Ya. Later. Boom. There it is, dude. Damn. It sucks that that happened. God, man. It, it really does suck that that happens. But could you imagine if he, let's say he had, like, two gigs this weekend? Already, like, right. if things were, like, fired up. He'd be in, you know, he'd probably have to sit it out. Right. Or, or just suck it up which right, I know, ain't gonna be do, good for you might do more damage than that's exactly. good exactly I mean wow dude yeah <laughs> man hang in there yeah man Sean Kirkpatrick Sean in 60 seconds bummer of a call but that's his commitment to the program that's right I mean dude I so. can't I, dude, he would call me hey dude I can't do this week I kinda like yeah yeah I would be like oh yeah no problem, no yeah. problem. he's like screw, screw that I'm on no no he came on right exactly came on and nailed it that's <laughs> cool man yeah, <laughs> no pun intended. Ha ha ha! Dave, man. Dave, well, we, this has been one of those days, right? It's been a weird, yeah. It's been weird, buddy. Cool. All right, but dude, let's take a break. Get reset back. We're gonna come up, knock out Gene Quaid's little ten-minute spot. We're gonna talk about the songwriting service. What's going on? A cinema clip. We'll ask him about that, and then you know, we'll kind of like just give a little demo. It's gonna be kind of cool, kind of rad. 
Then we're going to get Justin Taylor on the phone right after Gene. We're going to check in with him. And then we'll call it a night, man. Yeah. All the housekeeping done, man. We just get to talk music for, to two cool-ass dudes, man. That's right, man. I, I'm looking forward to it. Maybe that'll get us right, man. That's what we're here for, man. That, that's going to get me right for the week, man. Get to talk to cool buddy Gene and cool buddy Justin, man. It's going to be yeah, awesome. Buddy. Cool, dude. It's Guitar Dudes with Dan and Dan. We're Southern Maryland's number one choice in music talk radio. Yeah, for, yeah man, right? Exactly. You got it, man. It's you good. It. And we'll be right back after this. Yo, 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 Alban, let's talk construction. All right, Mr. Harsha, what's up? Our good friends at Allied Renovations and offer the best value when it comes to replacing your home's exterior, whether it be your roof or facade. Did you know that? How does he do it? Streamlined operations. Jesse and his team have been part of the roofing community since 2015. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, Jesse has some of the deepest roots in our community. Did you know that? Why does that matter? Because you don't have to worry about the here today, gone tomorrow, contractor schemes that are out there well, you know he's gonna be around that's some great stability yes it is so if and when the time comes your home needs help with its roof or facade please don't forget to contact Jesse Wickline at Allied Renovations that number is 301-399-7031 once again that number is 301-399-7031 they are waiting for your call Tattoos last forever. They're a permanent statement about your personality and style. Do you want to spend the rest of your life with ink that looks like it's been done by some junior apprentice? Or do you want a custom tattoo from Christopher Lane Tattoos? Chris has over 10 years in the biz and uses the best ink and machines in the industry. Check out Christopher Lane Tattoos' Instagram feed today and you will just see for yourself that he does some of the finest work in the Southern Maryland area. Give him a follow today and you will just marvel over the attention to detail in his work. Christopher Lane Tattoos on Instagram is your start on a pathway to tattoo bliss. Book your appointment through Christopher Lane Tattoos' Instagram private messaging service for an exclusive bonus that only Guitar Guru listeners are eligible for. Follow Christopher Lane Tattoos on Instagram today. Yo, 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 Albin, let's talk site maintenance solutions with Cooper Construction. Okay, great. Why are we outside? I wanted you to see how Cooper Construction's handling my site with the installation of my new septic tank system. Oh, I'm loving all this heavy equipment I'm seeing. You need this kind of equipment for this type of work. You say, do you? Yeah, man. Cooper Constructions offers complete site solutions for septic tanks and mounds, lot clearing up to three acres, and most importantly, stormwater management. Okay, let me get this straight. Cooper Construction offers site maintenance for lot clearing, septic systems, and stormwater management? You are correct. Does Cooper Construction have all the credentials needed for this type of work? Yes, they do, my friend. Cooper Construction has over 20 years' experience in the construction world. How do we get a hold of them? That's easy. Just dial 301-683-7766 and ask for a site visit today. Again, that number is 301-683-7766. Give them a call. You can also reach them on the web at buildwithcooper.com. Cooper Construction. From site to site, they will treat you right. What's up, y'all? This is Sam Grow, and you're listening to the Southern Maryland Guitar Guru Show. The Southern Maryland Guitar Gurus. The only guys that would do a live broadcast from Dog Man. We see each other through different eyes. Oh, yeah, we're back from break. It's the Guitar Gurus with Dan and Dan. We're Southern Maryland's number one choice for music talk radio. How are you tonight, Mr. All Alvin? right, there it is, man. You nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, we're having a great time as always, man. We're, we always dig our moments in the studio. We couldn't ask for anything better, and, and we got that support and love from you guys, which is the only other thing that's better than what we do. Yeah. Yeah, I feel great, man. That's cool, man. Hey, we were originally going to have Gene on next. We've tried during the break to contact him. We're having problems contacting him. So we're going to go right into Justin Taylor. And if we hear from Gene by in between now and then, we'll just pop him in at the end. There what you go. Think? Yeah. And then we'll figure it out later. There it is. There it is. Cool. All right. So here it is, dude. Uh, give me some soothing tones, and we'll tra- transition into getting Justin Taylor on the phone. All right. Featured guest, episode 84, Justin Taylor, repeat offender, right here on the Guru Show. Yeah, 
He's been on before. He's been on a lot. He once did an interview for Martini's parking lot. That's right. Yeah. Hello? Hey, Justin. It's Dan from Guitar Gears. You want to go on the air, buddy? Oh, absolutely. Anytime with you, brother. How you doing, man? Hey, man. Dude, we're chilling. It's Tuesday night in the studio. We're taping the show. Excited to have you oh. on, man. Well, thank you guys for having me. It's always a pleasure, and uh, it's always a good time. There's been a lot going on since we last talked, for sure. Oh, yeah, man. Um, that's what I want to get to in the first, but just real quick. Dan Alban, say hi to Justin. Oh, hey, Justin. What's up, man? Dan, what's up, brother? How are you? It's good to hear your voice as well, my friend. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, it's always good to hear yours, too. So, oh, thank you. We, it's, it's nice to be heard nowadays. You know, you know yeah. Can't be seen. Being, heard, <laughs> being heard is very important these days, though. So. Uh, oh, I gotta, yeah. I gotta Absolutely. say, uh, thanks for uh, hanging with us this evening. We do appreciate that. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. right? Yeah. So, right. So, hey, um, why don't you pop one in honor of Justin being on the show, Dan? Yeah, there what you do you go. think about that? Yeah. <laughs> Here, dude, he's yeah, popping let's, one let's for get you. One in for you, brother. There it is. There you go. All right. Ah, man, there it is. Good, there it is. Cool. All right, dude. Let Let's catch up, man. We're, we're you know, we're going to keep it to, you know, what we got to say. But what have you been up to since we last spoke, man? I'm curious. How are you dealing with everything? Well, man, uh, just uh, I guess kind of like the rest of us, just trying to uh, stay as occupied as I can and be as productive as I can. Um, I think the last time we spoke, what was that? Like January? Right. The end of January? Right. It was like we were in, you know, everything was kind of like, you know, dare, dare or should I say it, normal. Right. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we don't. I don't even remember what that feels like anymore. Um, right. Yeah, we. Uh, last time we spoke, like the record had just come out, uh, the Hindsight EP. Right. And uh, the shows were doing really good. We were just promoting all of those shows and uh, you know getting the band. I had the new band lineup lined up, and uh, you know they they have since been just absolutely phenomenal this whole year. They've been kicking major ass and with me and for me and. Um, then uh, we got two months of shows in, and then March came around, and we got shut down. So I've kind of just been, uh, you know, hanging around the house, chilling with my dogs in, uh, in April, and uh, working on some, uh, you know, working on some tunes, working with, uh, you know, my boy Coy over at Never Settle, um, you know, on the, the collaborations I've been doing with him, and the, the merchandise, um, the JT, you know, JTB swag, as we call it, and... Uh, yeah, just trying to, uh, I guess, lay low and stay safe um, to wait until shows are back up, which I guess we, we just now started doing a lot of gigs recently. Um, so that's been, it's been very good to you know, get back out in the world. But for a while there, man, I was, I was going absolutely stir crazy. It was, it was insane. Right. I mean, the, what, what kept me sane during all this is that we got to do the show every week. You know, and. Oh, that's a. Yeah, I, I bet that was a huge deal for both of you. Right, and you know that was our outlet. So I mean, we were, you know, Dan was struggling with not being able to jam with his band right when it was just getting going good too in their world. So you yeah, got, absolutely, you got that. But we still had the show once a week to come in here to let our, you know, just to get to somewhat normal, report on music, what was there to report on. We had fun with it for a while. We. Re- Dan was at his house. He was calling in remote on the phone system, just like you. So we we, mm-hmm. we 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 made do. It was fun. We know we learned a lot of different things, and and that kind of goes into my next question for you. I mean, what's the most valuable thing you've learned during this whole COVID crisis? What could what kind of bit of advice would you give to your fellow musician out there? You know, what what what's the thing you've learned? Oh man, that's so great. Um, that's a great question, actually. Um, I, I think I mean I've actually uh, I've actually juggled this back and forth a lot, but I think the, the biggest lesson that I learned, um, which I mean again I'm not you know a very I mean, I'm still a pretty young guy I'm I'm right. freshly 23 this year and um, well, you dude, know I, I like this question because you're young. Yeah, I want to hear the young man's perspective of what he's learned. Right. You know, so this is perfect, dude. Don't be, dude. You, you know, just because you're young doesn't mean you can't have an opinion or what you've learned. So, oh, dude. for sure. Well, I appreciate you saying that because then I feel like, you know, I have the freedom to be 100% honest. Uh, yeah, man. To you, like, you guys, yeah. I can always be. Yeah. I feel like, 
you know, like, I actually had this conversation with April not too long ago. We talked about it all the time, but, like, for a long time there, um, and I've had this conversation with a bunch of other buddies of mine that kind of all felt the same way. We, I was getting to a point where I was kind of burnt, you know, and right. I had been, I mean, you know, hell, I actually found my first photo the other day of my first show that I ever played. I was 13 years old. Almost the summer I turned 14 on Cobb Island. And I've at least been doing summer gigs since then. So you're talking, you know, nine years, you know. Right. And, you know, I was in the Sam Grove band at 18. Fresh, I mean, I was 17 technically still, freshly 18. So, I mean, you know, you got to think of all those gigs I've done over the last, you know, minimum six, six. It's like I've been running so hard that, you know, when when the lockdown happened and, you know, we couldn't go play shows anymore, I was, there's two things I learned. There was The first thing I learned was that as far as the business was concerned, there was a lot of things that I wasn't doing that I should have been doing that I had the opportunity to take the time and the education to kind of catch up to it and learn the information when it comes to actually, like, not just being a singer and a guitar player, but also, like, you know, being you know, a, a business leader and being a, a, a brand and trying to, you know, come up with different creative outlets, working on, you know, with my, my photographer um, who does my video, my, Mr. Bryant uh, from Sure Photo and Video, you know, doing all that stuff and trying to better myself as far as content and making like, you know, coming up with t-shirt ideas and the ways that I can, you know, make you know just make things cool or coming up with different more abstract song ideas things that i would like never have done if i was thinking okay well i better not sing for three days because i got four shows this week you know like there, there was that side of it and then there was the other side which i i never thought that i would say but um i'm at a point in my life now where i, I love what i do i i, I would do i'm gonna do, i'm gonna do this for every day for the rest of my life no questions asked and you guys all know that but when it comes to the shows and stuff it's like you know it's kind of like the same thing people say about their their their, job, their normal jobs or whatever quote unquote if you want to call them now like we were living to play not playing to live right. and that was when I realized how much I was actually missing out on I was like whoa you know not in the sense of like it was a it was a conscious thought process of like I need to go on the road so I have to miss I have to miss birthdays and miss weddings and miss you know graduations and this and that or like that kind of stuff. But it was like when I finally did get to do those things, I was like, you know, this is actually kind of my fault because I was so focused on the shows for so long and that being my sole thing that there was a lot of other time management that I was in control of that I didn't realize and. I was like, oh, this is my chance to make a switch. So, like, you know, just I think being smarter with the way that we, you know, we treat our bodies and treat our minds and um, treat our music and, you know, as our, as our outlet and how, how I've kind of made a decision to have a lot more balance, I guess, between the two when it comes to my personal life and then my professional life, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can dig that. Man, that's a good, good. That's great for other young people to hear. You know, balance everything out. Don't go super hardcore unless that's exactly what you want. You know, I, I think the key is like having. I, I was very blessed this year to have a lot of people around me that are so wise when it comes to that scenario. That I mean, the list is just too long to even begin to go down. But like, you know, having those conversations over the course of the the four months that we were stuck inside and you know there's nothing else to do but pick up the phone and call people and check in and it's like you know wow like the, it, it just a lot of that self-reflection you know I, I, I of course I'm, I'm a young guy I was guilty of just wanting to go you know balls to the wall and as hardcore as I could and you know let's go 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 and just you know hammer everything and it's like you know you know work smarter not they, they always say like work smarter not harder and take care of yourself and be mindful of, you know, what you're doing to yourself and who you're affecting around you. And, you know, it's, it's like, it really is true. You know, you have to really 
I'm at a point in my life where this isn't just about me anymore. You know, it's about my home and my family and my bandmates and their families and, you know, everyone that I work with on my team, from my agency to my, you know, uh, my, my, my whole team when it comes to people that help me release music and, and all of that. Like, we're all, you know, in this together and I have to, you know, just deciding to be a lot more mindful has been actually really freeing in a lot of ways. Really. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. I never thought I would say that, but, you know, it's uh, it's necessary. If you're a young guy that feels like, man, I'm, just, I'm feeling just burnt, well, maybe take a step back. See what you can try differently. You know, I did. And I found something that works for me. And maybe in a year it might you know, start to change a little bit and then I'll kind of refocus, but, you know, I think that mindfulness of your surroundings and your your own mental and physical is huge. It's huge. That's what I learned through this whole quarantine. You know, mindfulness and solidarity in yourself and your mind and all of that. Well, that's, yeah. that's very wise of you, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you. I yeah. thought a lot about that question of the email actually I really did I, I thought about that. that for like days yeah. that, that was a fantastic uh, perspective and it's it's got you know I'm sitting there listening to you got me thinking about what I need to fix in my fucking life hey you know <laughs> I, need, I need to be better you know and but you're, you're absolutely on the money I mean that is you, you couldn't ask for a better answer to that kind of question and well, have, thanks. Have yeah. coming and, and, from, you know, I'm glad yeah. that I have like both of you, for instance. You, you guys have taught me a lot, you know, over the years, and you know, it all comes from uh, you know, having good people around you too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, well, you know, I mean, you started at 13 to 23. That's 10 years. I mean, shit. I mean, just it's, it's a way to come up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess start young and then make all your make all your really stupid mistakes in your teens. That way, you know, you can kind of restart in your early twenties. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can kind of restart things and figure out what you got to do. <laughs> I, yeah. I I yeah. just wish when we were coming up, we had more of a people to guide us in the business aspect of it than what we had when we were coming up. It was just a totally different world back then, and and you you know the different time frame to see what you're doing at your age is very cool. Um, you got a really a smart. You got you got a brain in there because you're talking smart. So I can't imagine not doing what you talk. So. Oh well, thank you. Well, like listen to your elders. You know what I mean. Like always listen to your elders, no matter who it is. Right. Like you know that, that. I just I always even if I end up not agreeing, it's like I always sit and listen. Yeah. You know, that's when what it comes I was taught. Stuff. I was taught that you don't have to agree, but you you do need to listen. See, and I right. and I think that's the problem with a lot of the younger generation. They weren't taught that. Yeah. And that's a story for another day, but let's change subjects real quick. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. We don't want to go down that hole. But uh hey, right. let's talk more original music, live appearances. I mean, I know it's slow to open up. I know you're out there getting it, so this is your chance. Let's promote some music and promote some shows. Well, I appreciate you guys giving me the platform, man, and uh, you know, it's always you know, humbling when uh, I get to do things like this, and I'll tell you, man, it's been a, it's for as interesting of a year it's been for the whole world, and you know, looking through the phone and seeing what's going on, it's been a really kind of cool year for my music, and um, I'm very happy to say that um, I do have. So my original plans the last time when we talked kind of are not going to happen. I kind of that thing about like uh, taking a step back that I said and reflecting. Um, all of those plans went out the window because I re I reestablished what I thought I what I actually what I thought I wanted and what I actually do want, I guess, and what's probably the better <laughs> the better PR move, honestly. <laughs> but um, right. but uh, so I, I I'm not going to say any titles yet. But um, the one thing I can say is two things. We have um, I have a very very good uh, friend and confidant in my friend Mr. Brian Undock who. Um, is a very, very uh, great member of my family and uh, my grandfather who worked very closely with me on my, my music. And um, we had a discussion uh, on Sunday, actually, and I think we're going to, uh, obviously, we're still promoting the Hindsight EP that came out in January. Um, we're playing a bunch of shows right now, so if anybody wants to, you know, check out on Spotify or iTunes, check out the Hindsight EP. There's five songs on there. Uh, Over You and Found You are the top two right now. 
um, as far as streaming counts. Um, go check out that record and come rock them out with me at the shows. Um, all that stuff can be found on like the JustinTaylorBand.com website or just you know on my Instagram or my Facebook, Justin Taylor Guitar Guy. You could you guys can find out where I'll be. Um, and stuff's changed. You know, shows are always changing week to week, just depending on what happens in the world, unfortunately. But um, you know, if there's a show to be played and I can do it, and I feel like it's safe enough, uh, you, you bet your ass I'm gonna be there because I uh, I miss playing for people and making people smile. So that's the goal on that. And then as far as new music, um, there's a lot of new music that is being written and uh, produced in some ways and kind of juggled around. I've been writing a lot with my friends, um, one in particular, Mr. Hank Miller, who if you guys, I haven't introduced you guys to Hank yet, I'm going to send um, you guys his info because you would actually absolutely fall in love with him. He is um, just one of the, the baddest dudes I know. Um, in the game, and he's a hell of a songwriter. We've been writing a lot together. Um, we got a couple songs. I think we've got a song that we're gonna probably cut together, um, which more info will come on that, but I do, I am proud to say that November 1st is the goal. November 1st, I am hoping, as long as everything goes well, and so far we are ahead of schedule, um, as opposed to last time, we were behind schedule. <laughs> um, <laughs> This time we're ahead of it, and uh, I'm going to be putting out a single, uh, hopefully on November 1st. You'll have a, at least one new song from me, and uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of promo for that. And this is a song I'm really, really excited about. Great. Um, I think when you guys hear it, it's uh, it's going to, I don't know, it, it's it's just a special song. That's all I can say. The first time I heard it, I went, whoa. You know, I sat there on re- had it on repeat, just like in the dark with a cold beer, just kind of crying to myself, going, "Oh my god!" You know, <laughs> um, oh, wow. and that's kind of how I made my de- I made my decision. I was like, "I need to, I need to do this." So, uh, yeah, that's just, what I'm working on. Just in time for the holidays. Hey, it's good stuff, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, that's real good stuff. Real good stuff. Nice, uh, dude. I'm yeah, excited you, for boys. you, man. I, I love the EP, dude. I love it. You saw I promoted it when it came out. I got it on the phone. So Thank you, man. That means so much. You have no idea coming from you guys, man. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, man. Shit. It's, it's good stuff, man. I mean, it's new. If I can ask I you a question, it. because I'm doing a, like whoa, a, whoa, a, a wait, survey. Whoa, whoa, man, Ari. Survey question. Now, let me hear the question first. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We usually ask if the you, questions if, around here. <laughs> well, I just, I just want to know, if you had to pick one, because I know both of you pretty well, and I'm just interested to see if it's the same song that I think you would pick. At both of you, which one would you, what's the first song on that EP that you would put on repeat? All right, now for you, you personally. Now you really got us on the spot here. Just, <laughs> just because I had to do it once. I can't. I can't sit here and, and pick one thing over the another thing. I mean, dude. Wow. I like the whole thing, man. All right. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. So what, much, I, I keep keep talking. All, I'm trying to pull up the play counts on my phone so I can tell you. <laughs> so, so give me a give me a give me a minute. Hold on, talk real quick. Just all right. Well, we're gonna, oh, you got it. We're gonna find out the play counts on Harsh's phone. That'll determine which one is his. I, w- I will say that my my personal favorite is probably Over You. When it comes to the live shows, that's the one that seems to hit pretty pretty hard home. So that's, that's for sure. That's got the great reception when you're out playing live. Yeah, that and Found You too. That that song. Um, Actually, that was the last one that we did for the record. I wrote that. Uh, yeah, well, I think we got the record done the last week of December. I wrote that probably December. I think it was December twelfth. Actually, yeah. we wrote that. Man, you right down to the day. All okay. right, dude. Well, no shocker that it's definitely over you is the one I have played most on my phone. <laughs> S- second, <laughs> I clo- love it. Closely right behind, make your night, and then the top three is found you. So those are my top three: over you, make your night, and found you. Play count wise, that is so, awesome. So I just wanted to pull that up. I didn't want to just guess. And then, of course, 
when I'm in my car and I'm playing music, it's totally different than navigating from the home screen. I'm like, how the fuck do I find this motherfucker? You know, right, <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, dude, right. I never go this way. It's usually on my car, on your car, and car play, dude. It's just so much easier. So whatever. But anyway, no, that that's my top three for it, dude. It's cool, man. It's good stuff, dude. It's good well, stuff. Well, thank you, boys. Uh, yeah, you guys have uh, you guys have always been so um, gracious to me and. Uh, you know, kind when it comes to giving me a, an opportunity to talk to you guys. You know, not just as friends, but also giving me a platform. And, uh, you know, you guys are a big part of this journey too, man. And it's uh, it, it's really special to have you you both as a part of uh, a part of that big part of that record. And honestly, probably why it's doing so well. You know, yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Well, mm-hmm. the production, dude. Yeah. I like the production. Yeah, it's very I mean, well done, man. Yeah, man, that matters nowadays. I mean, some bands do it right, some bands don't do it as well, and you know, and then some guys do it perfect, and it still doesn't go anywhere. So, what do you do? Right, yeah, I guess that's like kind of the uh, toss-up. I mean, I, I really appreciate you saying that. I mean, we like when me and uh, you know we were work on the record. You know, I had I, I had three different producers. I uh, Nick Green uh, produced over you. Um, right. And we actually did that song in his apartment in uh, Towson, Maryland. Nice. And uh, the guy's also an aerospace engineer, so he's just, he's a genius. Um, and then my buddy Aaron Maloney did Call Me Crazy and Found You, and I worked with an amazing producer um, whose name is Ace down at uh, County Q down in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. But all three of them, the one thing that they were very passionate about was just that raw you know, loud guitars, loud drums. I mean, Joe Barrett played on two of the songs, you know what I mean? So right, it's like, right. you can't really get more visceral when it comes to rhythms than that, you know? And, uh, you know, it's just like, we really wanted to just produce them in a way that was, it, it hit you in the chest through the speaker, you know? Right, like, right. I mean, yeah. I mean, or at least try to, you know? It's good stuff, dude. It's good stuff, man. Real good dude, stuff. Dude, thank you, man. That means so much, man. We really speak about so great to hear because like I was you know it made me emotional like the first time we that, that was the first mix honestly for Over You um, just since we're talking about that song like that was probably the first or second mix that we did and Aaron actually sent that back to me and I was like oh yeah yep, that's it and it was like you know wow, it, it's a pretty powerful thing and you just kind of can do it really stripped down and raw like that with a little you know fluff I guess yeah, that, that's a word fluff, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that's pretty. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. That was only a first or second mix, and it was already like, okay, that's it. That's the one. You know, because sometimes yeah, I think if it's it was right, like two mixes. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome, man. Hey, all right, Justin, real quick, because that was Gene that just called on my other phone. Because now we found him, so he's ready to come on. So, um, oh, you tell him I said hello. I will. Hey, real quick, um, best gig, worst gig, um. Give us the recap of the last time you're on here. Just refresh the answer for the audience so they know what's up. Oh yeah, the, the best gig I ever had. Um, I believe uh, actually the, the answers are actually changed up today. The best gig oh, we've perfect. had so far is when uh, the EP came out. We played at the Jetty in uh, Cat Island, Maryland, and it was the uh, dead of winter, so the, the the doors were closed. It was cold out. And uh, it was only our second gig there. The EP had only been out for a month, and there were people, like half the people in that audience I either knew or, like, they they were all friends of mine, and they were all singing the songs, and, you know, uh, I definitely uh, got a little tore up that that night, but that was all good, all good fun. Um, Nice. That's okay. So that was just a celebration, man. That was the best one to date. Um... The worst gig was the last gig that we played before quarantine because <laughs> it made me sad because I went on stage uh, kind of knowing, like March 12th, we did a show up at Beer Park Tavern in Delaware and I was like, you know, this is probably going to be, like that's when all the news reports were coming out. I was like, this is probably going to be the last one for a while, right? you know, and uh, but that whole set, I was just kind of thinking to myself, man, you better, you better enjoy this, you know soak it up it was a great gig don't get me wrong but it was just that thing in the back of my mind like man this is gonna suck for a while if this is the last one yep. and yeah there it was uh so yeah i get it yeah, dude. Yeah, that's that's one worse one <laughs> <laughs> i'm hip i'm hip man well dude it's been great catching up with you tonight man it really is thank you yeah thank you you likewise man and uh 
the next time that we can all, you know, both all three of us can get together in a room and just hang out one night at a show or something, we uh, definitely got to make that happen. And Danny, I got to come see you play, bro. Uh, eventually you will, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. It's, as soon as we can, I want to make that can. happen, bro. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Right. I can't wait, man. You know, I got the... Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much again. And, um, yeah. yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I gush about you guys all the time. And, but it's just like, I can never appreciate everything you guys have done for me. And, uh, you know, what you guys are doing in Southern Maryland, it's one of the most badass things I've, ever, I've seen in a while. So, uh, you know, I'm always rooting for you guys, man. Perfect. I thank did. you, brother. Yeah, man, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. See, you got us all hyped up again. Yeah, man, we're hyped. All right. right. Well, cool. All right, dude, Justin from the Guitar Gurus, man. We say thank you and good night, and we will check you out the next time, all right? Yes, sir. Sounds good. Everybody out there in the Internet world, stay safe. Danny, Dan, I love you guys. Thank you so much, and uh, you guys stay safe as well. Thank you forever. All right, Justin. All right, all right man, peace out. You good, we'll brother. You. All right. Peace out, brother. See you. All right, later. Bye. Later. Bye. There he goes, man. Justin Taylor, yeah. man. Always just positive, man. I love that. Cool. Give me a recap. I'm going to see if I can get a hold of Gene text by and yeah, tell him to pick you... up this phone. And we're going to fly right into it if possible. Yeah. What do you think about that? See if the old man got up out of bed. I know they go to bed early, you know, at that age. All right. Well, we want to thank Justin Taylor for coming on again. He's got some exciting things coming up November 1st. Dropping a new single, everybody. So be ready for that. In the meantime, get over there and check him out where he's playing he's going out there he's still grinding putting in the good work and we look forward to uh everything he's got coming up and all the hard work he's putting into it so thank you again justin taylor you are the man we love you here and with that being said we're going to uh oakley transition in right into the call with gene quaid he yeah. called me while we were doing this so well, we'll see what we can get, dude. Uh, I just sent him a message on my phone saying we're going to call on this other number so he knows. Yeah. So let's see what happens, man. What do you think? All right. Here comes the uh, live and dangerous part. You know, let's just right, right. let's just see what happens. We've been fighting this thing all night. Yeah, it's been a week. Yes, sir. Gene Quaid, Dan Harsha, Dan Alban from the Guitar Gurus. How are you tonight, sir? Buddy, I'm kicking it, doing it. Doing my thing, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, this is pretty cool. Um, we had a little hiccup in the timing, but it's all good now, brother. I'm digging it. Yeah, and I apologize on that. That's my my fault. Hey, we got you connected. We're happy, so it's all good. No worries. Good. Cool. Hey, we're not like on live a AM, FM, radio wave, so it's all good. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Well, dude. Awesome, um, man. So, so, dude, I, I saw your post on Facebook. Um, and it's really cool. That's why I, I sent you the message to come on tonight. But let's just catch up since we last talked to you just a little while ago. How, how's everything hanging for you guys? Are y'all looking at any kind of fall shows? Or can you bring us up to speed at all for the band-wise? Well, Sam just finished up a run that he was doing. It was just his, uh, you know, the backyard party type things that they were doing. Right. Uh, so he's, I think he doesn't go back out, I believe, until October. Um, so he's actually on a little vacation, taking a little break. And uh, the rest of the band, as far as, you know, uh, Mike and Joe and myself, we're actually sitting back and, you know, we don't, they don't need us out there right now because it's just they can't afford to bring us on the road. Um, you know, he cut everything back because obviously the bus was expensive. The touring schedule was, you know, just wasn't going to work with the amount of money. Uh, so everything has changed in that industry. So, you know, we have... Uh, you know, I've had to pick up some other things and, and try to keep myself. I want to stay in music. I don't want to, you know, have to skip to a different job at this point. But, you know, uh, doing what I got to do to keep my family going, you know. Right, man. Wow. Dude. That's the bottom line at the end of the day is taking care of the family, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. You know, it's, you know, you, and I, I've been in and out of this business, as you all know. <laughs> I mean, I've, Everything from studios to, you know, but I've always tried to keep my hand into the business, whether I'm playing it or not. I mean, I took a long break there for a while, came back and played, started doing, you know, like sitting, you know, just sitting in with people and playing. And finally, I got hooked up in, with Sam. And then, of course, that's all I've been doing for, you know, 14 years is working with him. So, wow. I know. Man. So, this is really a shocker for me to be, you know, like reinventing. But as soon as I came off the road, March 15th, that was our last, we did our run in Florida with Colt Ford. Right. You know, I came back home to, you know, first it was we're going to go back out and do shows for 250 people. 
Then it went to, oh, we're going to play for 150 people. And then by Tuesday, they said, that's it. You know, there's nothing going on. So uh, all the shows were canceled. And, I mean, we had a great lineup of shows for that year. So it was just that all plummeted. You know? oh, yeah. This, this was going to be the, one of the biggest years for a lot of people this year. Well, you know, here's, here's the, the crazy thing to this. I always, you know, because, of course, with every disaster or anything like this, it always something happens on the other end of it. You know, it's like. Right. He has a single. He has a single out right now that is just crushing it, and it's. And who's to say? I mean, if that song came out and maybe we were still touring, it might not have got as much, you know, uh, you know, travel or footage, if you want to call it, or uh, as what it's doing right now. But it's just, it's killing it, man. He's getting streams like crazy. I mean, I, I want to say I could be off on this number, but you guys probably have been watching it. It's like, yeah. what is it, like 10, 10 million streams or some stuff he's getting now? I mean, he's just, he's wow. killing it. And, and the Spotify check still $300. <laughs> <laughs> and and there you go, my brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, right. No, that's and amazing. And there you though. go. Yeah, that's, uh, and of course, there's battles there, too. I mean, I guess you've been keeping up on that. We don't yeah, want to get in all that politics, but right, yeah. yeah, there's a... Uh, you know, musicians aren't too happy with Spotify right now, and they haven't been for a long time, but they've just been making do. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, dude, at the end of the day, are you really mad at Spotify, or are you mad at your customers? Well, you know I what? Mean, you this, know, in, this industry, you know what? The world is full of opportunities, right? and I can't I can't slap a man in the face for, for starting up a business. And then, of course, the problem is, is everybody jumps on that bandwagon, and it's really hard for you to be... Like, if you're trying to be competitive, you know, what are you going to do? You know, it's like, so then that guy says, well, listen, you know, yeah, sure, I take this much money for streaming, but that just means you need to put out more music. Right, I get, see, I know, dude, we could go on this. I I just, it sucks, man, because I kind of blame the consumer at the same time, because no one values the music like we valued it growing up. Oh, dude, it's, that is, that's something is never going to happen, but... Here's the thing: If you're not touring, if you're not touring, it's it's tough. But you can you can survive. But the touring is where the money's at for everybody. Playing live shows has been the money maker. Your music is almost like you know it's it's a you know it's a giveaway sometimes. Uh, you know, especially when you're talking about you know nobody's putting out CDs hardly anymore because of the cost. Right, but I mean, you as, know? as you just said, we just do it as a giveaway. So why? Yeah. And then the streaming guys are like, all right, you're giving it away, so we're just going to give it away, everybody, for you. Now, I always tell my, my buddies that go, should I put out any CDs? I, and I said, yeah, you should run CDs. And I said, you, don't order 3,000, you know. But, yeah, you know, if, <laughs> put it this way, if you know for sure that you can sell 600 of them in, you know, in your first, you know, four months of going out or three months, hopefully you sell them faster than that. But, you know, CDs, you have to look at them as it's it's merchandise. Don't right. think of it as don't get attached to it. Other than that, so it's a it's a profit margin, and people love to buy that. I'd rather sell a CD than sell a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, I would too because you get you know they're gonna use it because they bought it. Right, they're gonna listen to it. Maybe they download it. People buy it. They they get you to sign on it and stuff. And it's like, but at least that way, you know. And again, whether or not they're playing it, but you know, most people will take it and. And play it and, and uh, put it in their collection. And I'd rather, you know, a T-shirt's cool too. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but right, right, right. I, I'd rather I'd rather them have the music. So yeah, the CDs are a lot more tangible because you know you can put them in and have hours of entertainment. You know, you're gonna wear that shirt once, throw it in the laundry. Uh, well, that's, that's true. I mean, like you know, it's like we, uh, you know, we pretty much uh, as far as merchandise, I mean, I know we've had, especially this last few years, we've really stepped up the game in that. So that's a, nice. that's an industry there too. It's like, you know, fans don't capitalize on everything. Like you need to be making money when you're sleeping, you know? Yeah. yeah. I hear you. So, so uh, cause it's, it's tough mask. when it's like, again, you're talking about a one man show here right now. And I know how hard it is. Like when you're, when you're trying to make your money and it's you and that's it, you know? Right. All right. Uh, uh and it depends on how many hours you work. It's not about like, are you making money when you're not there at your desk or out on your job? You know. <laughs> I get it, man. Well, let, let, let's talk about the songwriting services you got going on. Yeah, that, that's what yeah, his, that that's what piqued my interest. That's what got me juiced up to, to send a message. Hey, man, let's go on the show tonight. Um, let it's the the floor is yours, man. Tell people what you can do, and then we'll talk about that little clip I sent you. All right. 
Uh, all right. Well, starting with the the one thing. Now, I know this is not. It's a little off topic, but right. I have been doing vocal coaching too. So that's something that I've been doing for years. Oh, yeah. But I'm doing that again through Skype. Oh, that's um, awesome. As far as this, yeah, as far as the songwriting goes, what's happening here is like again, this has changed everything. I I work with uh, writers. I work with people who just write lyrics. Uh, I work with people who, you know, create songs and then want demos done. So actually, I flesh out the songs here in my home studio, and uh, and it's and it's again, it's from the bottom up. It could be somebody who's been playing for years, but you know, needs me to do, a, you know, drum tracks or to do. Uh, they they need help with melody. Uh, I've got some writers that are hitting me up and saying, "Hey, listen, I got a verse course, but I need you to help me finish writing it. I'll even give you part writer or whatever, you know, on it." to help me complete the song if you like it and you want to work on it so um i'm basically making myself available in every facet there as far as but it's the strength of this is really in the demo process here um you know i'm not doing finalized you know stuff now some stuff i've been turning out they have been playing it you know and and using it and, and putting it on spotify but it's more of i'm trying to be that demo guy so it's building tracks and I get all kinds of calls. Like I might have somebody that says, "Hey, I've got a, you know, song. I want to write this for my wife. It's our anniversary coming up, or I'm getting married, or, you know, we had a death in the family. You know, I need you to write something, you know, as for them." And it's like, it's, so it's everything in the music part of it as far as creating a song. That's what I do. Perfect. All right, I emailed you that clip. It's like three and a half minutes. It's my little test clip I'm doing. Check out all my gear, trying to get a tone dialed in. But it's, yeah. a, it's a cool little riff I got going on. Say if I called you up and said, Gene, man, this is the main riff of the song. I need to get a chorus, maybe a bridge built for it. What would be the next step someone could would, would, would take? What would you take? What would okay. be the next step? Well, I like when people deal directly with me. Um, it's cheaper that way. Um, and I have packages that I do. So if you needed me, say for instance, if you said, Gene, I have lyrics, but I have nothing else. I have a, a package to just create maybe with an acoustic guitar, a vocal line. If you need a piano, whatever you want, I can build that song from there. There's another package for people maybe say that have a melody idea. Like maybe you have some of the song, you have a melody idea, but you don't have all of it together. I can, I can take that, what you already have, build from it. Uh, or again, build it from scratch. Uh, I could take it to the next level where you say, listen, I I need this song. I need you to, to finish this out. It's already fleshed out, but I need you to finish it, mix it, master it. Can you do that? And then so there's a package for that. So pretty much anything, it's, it's kind of customizing in a way because nobody has the same deal going on, you know? So I leave it pretty wide open and there's kind of like an entree of what you can pick from. You go, well, listen, I, you know, I really want dobro on this well i have musicians that i deal with all over you know including mr mike stacy that's been uh graciously putting his stuff on a lot of these tracks too so if i have somebody who says i need mandolin dobro or you know i want electric guitar and i want this kind of style you know i want a female vocal i can i find all those players to play on this stuff wow wow you're like the modern day song promoter like well, man, of, you remember, I had, I've had two together. studios in yeah. the past, so that that has helped me a lot. I mean, I've got a lot of guys I can call, you know, hey, Rich Isaac is a good buddy of mine. I can call Rich up and say, hey, I need some help, you know, and Rich is right there for me. Or, hey, listen, I need you to, t you know, I need a I need a dobro player. You got somebody or a pedal steel player, you know, he's he's just he's helpful, too. So we all work together. We network together. And it's and it's what makes this work. Awesome. But the other one I was going to mention, I didn't mention this. I'm also connected with Fiverr. I think it's how they pronounce it. Uh, Fiverr. Fiverr. Is, yeah, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. It's now I I like to do this stuff directly because it's cheaper because they charge me a percentage, but they have it set up there in there too. So if you feel more comfortable going through a company to deal with me, uh, they handle everything from the communication parts of it, the bids, the custom orders. So. And I do a lot of stuff with them too, so I'm really reaching out to a lot of those different companies just to get my name around. Okay. So you know, I mean, I'm, I'm working on something right now with somebody in Europe, and it's like, you know, there's no boundaries. It's it's all over the world, pretty much. That you know, you get uh, uh, songs sent to you. But I like working with 
you know, if I can do the stuff one on one with people that I know from the area, or, you know, uh, that's uh, what I'm trying to do too is make sure that they know I'm here and I'm in their backyard, so to speak. Wow. What a service. This is great, man. This is absolutely man. awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's been crazy. Like uh, the vocal lesson stuff too is uh, is, you know, I really got a, a you know, I got a handful of students, but great people, and it's like, and it's I never thought about teaching on Skype. I mean, and you know, of course, everybody's working on Zoom and stuff now too. But it's like, I never really thought about doing that. But March sixteenth, I was already getting myself set up. So yeah. That's cool, man. Well, I'm glad to have you on tonight and give you the chance to promote it. Man, man. I love talking to you guys all the time, man. You're, <laughs> again, you know, it's like just to hear somebody else that's like excited about music like you guys are, it makes me feel good too. So, well, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, this I mean is- dude, for you, for, for us getting you on here as much as we do, that means a lot more to us than you can imagine. Right. So, but you know, it's just got a from uh, Jason Hall. He's uh, had another number one hit with Miranda Lambert, Bluebird. There he goes. <laughs> just tearing it up. There he man. goes. Dude, I, I love to hear hometown boys just kicking it. I'll tell you, I, I, I got a hold of him about a month ago. And that was the first time me and him have talked in probably about 20 years or 15 or 20 years. And we, we sat on that phone, I know, for three hours, man. Dude, and, he's a great guy. Every time I've been down there, I try to hook up with him. He's like he, he's busy as heck. Yeah, he you know, says, another one's Jeff Jeff Giuliano too over yeah, in Delaware. That's right. You know, he's he's been doing all those mixes for Dan and Shay, and mm-hmm. pretty much, I mean, every, all his stuff here lately. I don't think he's had anything he's mixed here lately that hasn't been a number one. Wow, it's just that's amazing to me, man. That shows you, man. We got some. We have talent here, man. It's like a lot of people. There's still people that are stay either. I put it this way: you leave home. But you always, some of you know, you do come back. So it's like there's some of them that have moved away, but all those guys still come back on the East Coast to do shows. They so. do, they do. And here's a, here's a quick, funny little story about Jason, real quick, because we're gonna have him on this year, hopefully at some point. Great. Well, if he was never so busy, he's always busy. Um, so we're talking uh, the old days back, and you remember the old days? I was in this first band. We, you, I don't know what you're talking about. You did all the recording for us, man. So uh, here I am talking to Jason, who's, you know, he's had worked on many hits here in the last few years, number ones, everything else. And you know what? The thing he got that got him the most, he goes, "You remember the time we were leaving practice, and I rear-ended you, and I thought you were going to come out of your car and rip my head off." <laughs> I said, "You know what? I do remember that." But I would never oh, do my that. Gosh. He goes, I was so scared. <laughs> Is that was that over at Dan's house? Yeah, that was yeah down in Because Dan lived Dan lived back on one of them country roads, yeah. man. That was a tough little uh, driveway to get out of. So yeah, I can yeah. imagine that happening. Yeah, he hit me right in the rear, man. Oh. <laughs> it was, those are the good well, times. At least, at least if it was somebody you knew, that's, that made it better, right? That's right. Wow, dude. That's funny, man. Gene, I am so proud of you, man. I'm so happy Dude, for you. Listen, I'm proud. I'm proud of you. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you, like, say, you guys again for starting something up from scratch like that. That's uh, that's awesome. I, again, I know how much effort it takes to put something like that together, and you guys are still swinging the bat. I mean, you, you know, you haven't stopped with it, and it's been steadily growing. So, you know, it just shows determination, determination, determination. It always wins. You know. That's right. Right, man. That's what I said, man. I'm not going to stop doing this, but I'm, you know, one way or the other, I'm going to be in some fashion of this business. It's like I can't. I've never been able to get away from it. I think, uh, you know, a long time ago, I was working in a, selling insurance, and uh, I'm talking many years ago, and it's like I finally got an offer to go on a production deal, and I've never really stopped. You know, either it's been at a music store, but I've always had my hands in music studios, whatever. You know, it's like. Mm-hmm. Um, Master of none, but I love doing it, you know. It suits you, man. It suits you, for sure. Absolutely. I think it, I think it keeps, keeps me alive. I think it keeps me happy, I should say. so. That's the key to being happy. you got to be happy, man. Right. Um, but, but we're going to see a lot of different changes. I'm pretty sure with, with what's happening this year that there's going to be a lot of changes in, in uh, yeah. players, industry, everything, clubs, as we've seen, a lot of things have changed. So. Right. But again, it's all good. I mean, it's gonna things are gonna evolve into something else. You know, it's like that's the way life is. Well, this is a perfect example of things evolving into something else with what you're doing, right? So you're, yeah, I mean, I you yeah. know, I've always said like you know, I, I've never been. It, put it this way, 
as much as I hate to say I hate the pandemic and of course I, you know I'm sad for everybody who's had to go through any kind of illness with this stuff but at the same time it's actually it's changed a lot of things because I wouldn't have been able to do this uh, in this fashion had something like this not ha- I mean the way the way this happened it changed the way we had to do business so you had right. to kind of either reinvent and and I again you know it's changed things i know sam is saying the same thing it's like you know he was at that point where you know the the business was just like you know it was it was so expensive to keep everything rolling you know and uh and then of course now this happens and then now he's back out driving his shows in a in a truck you know and he's carries a little bit of gear in the back seat of the car and it's just him and you know tinley out there playing right right so talk about talk about full swing you know from work your way all the way up to a tour bus and then you know and you're doing shows you know in front of tons of people to now all of a sudden he's doing uh, some backyard parties and driving in his, in his truck so hey man but he's still doing it and that's the thing that's I, right. and I, he's actually happy and he's uh you know he said he's had a chance to kind of unwind and you know and look around to see what's going on around him yeah so i think it's been the same for everybody i mean Mike's doing a lot of stuff with me down there too. He's actually like, uh, he's my go-to guy for a lot of different instrumentation that nobody, you know, it was hard to find. I should say players up here to do that stuff. Yeah, and, you, uh, you know, when you get those specialty instruments, you really you got to have a wide reach. Yeah, dude, yeah. he kills it. I mean, I send him something out, and it's like bam, 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 and he sends me back <laughs> variations and tracks of yeah. just and, and he's and he's, and he's top shelf with the technology too. Oh my God! Put it this way, Mike Stacy has a music store basically at his house. It's he's got so many pedals, so many instruments. He's got stuff that I don't even know what it's called. I mean, it's just, but he 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 has so much stuff available to him. So it's like when I call him up, I know I'm going to have, you know, variations of PRS guitars. I'm going to have, you know, a Martin triple. You know, I mean, he's got everything. No, you I'm, know? I'm more like the computer stuff. Like he's on the high speed net. He's He's flopping <laughs> files because I'm just trying to picture him behind the computer because I would fly to Tennessee to spend the weekend to be with that to see that. Oh my! He has a whole room that's actually it's it has shelves. I mean of his instruments, so he pulls stuff down and randomly pulls them out and plays them. You know, hollow body guitars, different acoustic guitars. I mean, he has so much. But he's actually his electronic skills now. As far as electronics in his part with the playing the guitar, he's on fire. Right, right. Uh, He's actually doing what we're doing right now. This has been an, an eye opener for him too. So he's had to now. I've, always, I've been dabbling with uh, recording, you know, and, and up to you know with dolls and doing all that stuff for a little while. But with Mike, it's been he's been standoffish about that whole getting into that part of it. But now, I mean, he's sending me tracks and stuff, and you know, it's like it's so cool to see him, you know, move into that. So uh, sure does help me out. I'm happy to have him along. So. Yeah, that now that's the answer I wanted. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. All right, I'm hip. <laughs> All right, so let's do future plans, man. I know it's kind of hard to uh, think of, but you know, I'm, I like to get your take. What, what do you think you're you know planning what? I, to do? I swear, that is a, that is the toughest thing. I, I don't. The only way I can answer that is I, I wish I could see what's going to happen, but I don't. I don't really know. I mean, I, I see that at some point I'm probably going to. You know, obviously I'm going to probably be back out playing. But I can't even tell you when that's going to happen. I mean, with this going on, uh, you know, unless our whole business idea is restructured, you know, where we go back to square one. But here now you're talking about a guy that's got, you know, uh, you know, 10 million streams. So what's going to happen there? Right. You know, how's that going to, you know, that could change, that could change his life in, you know, a blink of an eye. And because it, it just takes sometimes a song, the right break, the right timing. Uh, but but you know that we've worked very, very hard for years now. And it's just slowly moving. Like when you think, when we got to this bus thing, you know, to that was kind of like a big deal, you know. Because it's like you finally have moved up to that point where you're, now you're, you're riding and instead of driving. And the venues get better. You know, there's catering. I mean, little things like, I mean, it's like those things we always dream about when we're playing in the basement. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. And to finally get to that point, I'm like going, man, especially at my age at this point, it's like, you know, finally they get to that kind of stuff and go, wow, 
so this is really cool you know and uh but at the same time realizing and staying grounded that you know what you know you're only as good as yesterday you know your last you know big record you're only as good as your last show so you really have to there's always people out there looking at you know to replace you uh there's always something the newest greatest thing that's coming out so you really got to stay on your toes man you can't uh you can never take that for granted I, and that's why i tell people man when you you know you get to that and you climb up there hanging on to it's a tough thing yeah i, I can relate to that man. yeah man wow you know I've, I've seen guys that uh and i'm not trying to with the pity party but you know guys in nashville guys that are writers guys that have had hits and all of a sudden they're without a publishing deal um you know they you know they haven't had a hit for over 10 years or you know or sometimes even longer so it's like you know that's that's some crazy stuff but the passion for it is what keeps driving these guys you know right the and, constant Here's this song. Here's this song. They just love it. it. They wake up and think about it all right. day. And yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I've I've heard some of these guys, some of these writers that are just like the most awesome songs you ever heard. I mean, they're you know classics. And then you know, right now they're just sitting around, you know, not, no hits, haven't had anything. And of course, the industry changes, and you know, then it's all of a sudden now there's a new style of music being written. So a lot of the young guys are getting those track jobs, like what I'm doing right now it's really tough for me to compete because uh you know i have i i say this is what i do this is the styles i do but if, if it's pop music i'm very you know i'm limited on what i will do with that uh if it's hardcore you know uh, electronic it's like i have you know certain things i can do with that but there's younger guys that that's all they know you know right, right. and uh that sound you know, it's like it's like if it's all synthesized, they're, ha they're happy. You know, to me, I like to, you know, I like the organic kind of stuff. You know, I like to have guitars in there, but I'll mix it up, you know, and do different things. But I, I uh, you know, there's a there's a job for everybody out there. So if you're good at one thing, you know, it's like, you know, keep cracking at that and be the best that you can be. You know, I hear you. There it is. Wise good advice. Good advice, man. <laughs> Wise words. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. Well, dude, man, this has been cool. I appreciate your time coming on short notice. Um, dude, I, I appreciate you. And again, I'm so sorry that I was running behind. Uh, if I told you what I was doing, you'd probably laugh. I was actually shopping, uh, getting, and it took me longer to get out of the store and get down the road. <laughs> hey, that, you know what? It worked out better because we got more time with you at the end of the show. So, well, you know what? I'm happy for that. So, it all, see, look, everything works out. <laughs> exactly. Everything always yeah, does. Yeah, because we had you originally scheduled for ten minutes right before Justin. Now, now we've had you on for almost a half hour. So this is pretty. This is sweet, man. We well, yeah. you know what I do? What I as soon as you said about Justin, I that kid, uh, you know, he's he's done so well, and I really uh, respect him for like sticking to it. And he's he's such a he's such a cool dude. He actually, you know, I didn't expect to hear from from him like, you know, but he he FaceTimed me not too long ago and we talked and, you know, on the phone. It was like, you know, it was really cool for him to reach out to me like that. And uh, but, uh, you know, he was saying how much he respected me and Mike and stuff for helping him. And and also it was, it's really cool. And I like I say, so everything that's happening for him is great. He deserves it. And uh, so I'm glad you guys got an interview with him. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you go back and listen to it after it. Oh, I will. When it premieres, I will. He ha he has had a lot of great insight about himself and where he's at, and yeah. you know, we're, it, for a young guy, he's got a very wise mind and a very positive attitude. Yeah, that's really cool. You know, something I forgot to tell you too. Um, I've actually been working with somebody that's we're we're actually pitching songs. Uh, it's a uh, I shouldn't say we're pitching the songs, but we're writing songs to be pitched. So. Uh, we've been doing a little dabbling into that too. So I've been actually writing songs for uh, you know anybody who's basically looking to cut albums at this point. So uh, just to name some names, name dropping here. Nice. Uh, there's been everything from Trace Atkins, uh, Keith Urban, um, you know, so you know, uh, Morgan Wallen. So there's like different different artists that are looking for songs. So I've been trying that. So you know, hopefully we're going to get close. Um, you know, we've got uh, something we're doing right now that I hope, uh, like, say, we, we keep getting closer and closer. So uh, we keep pitching them and see what happens. 
That's cool, man. Well, yeah. our fingers are crossed for you, man. Uh, determination when I get, is going to get When I get, get one of them, when I get a hold on one or it gets cut, then I'll come back on and I'll make sure you guys hear it and we can talk about that. Nice. Yes. Oh, and that's not. I'm being about. I'm being positive here. I'm counting my. You know, <laughs> it's like yes. let me tell you something. That's a tough market there because you've got so many writers, so many great songs. You know, it just you never know. You know, but again, I've seen guys that have been doing it for years and not get a cut, and then I've seen some guys come in and just have the right song, the right moment. They've right. got the right connection, and bam, it gets cut. So, but you got to have the song's got to be awesome. Right. First of all, it's got to be the best ever. So it's they don't take any trash. That's for sure. Right. Well, it gets a, it gets a lot tougher if you don't try. So you know. You're, well, that's it. You know, I got you know. Again, you keep keep doing trying. it. Again, like I was saying, keep writing, keep doing it. If that's what yep. you do, if you're a writer, keep writing. Write every day. There you know, you write go. with other people. Learn as much <laughs> as you can. If you're if you're a guitar player, you know, same thing. You know, just if that's what you're going to do for a living. You know, basically, you know, you have to see that and go for that only. You know, it's like if you have something else to fall back on, it's like you're never going to do it. So yeah. you've got to really be gung ho and put your nose to it. All right. Suit, man. Wise words, man. Wise words again. Gene Quaid. Man. That's what, this has been awesome, that. dude. Dude, all right. get, a couple drinks, get a couple drinks in me, you all hear all kinds of crazy stuff. Hey, see, <laughs> we might have to do that off the air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we still got to do that. We still have to hook up and do that. We're waiting. I We're mean, waiting. I'm good here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm, well, in, I'm down don't, the street, uh, so. Don't freak out if you get a call one night and we say, okay, I'm going to meet you here. Or, well, or come over and I'll just bring the bring the beer or the liquor and we'll we'll, uh, we'll have a drink and talk some stuff. Hey, am I, well, what I do is I do a carport uh, carport get down, man. Yeah, social distancing. We hang out on my Good carport, deal. man, outside. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll make sure I t- I'll bring it. I'll bring it. I'll come up in an Uber and, and, uh, and be safe and we'll... Uh, Cause I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be walking too straight when I get done up, up with you guys. So. <laughs> not with me, you won't. Right. <laughs> Especially if I'm already home. It's over. You've been in tra- you're in training, right? <laughs> right? You know it, man. Oh wow! Careful what you ask for. <laughs> you might get it. Yeah, so. I, I, yeah. I'm a, I'm a lightweight anymore. I'm not gonna say that I can keep up with anybody when it comes oh, to that. I can't. I can't barely stay up past eight o'clock anymore. <laughs> no, I, I I can talk a game, but you know, a couple beers in it, I'm going like, okay, man. You know, it's like. <laughs> Well, we don't want to expose that. We want to leave the mystery of we're badasses. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm not gonna. I don't even admit to that anymore. You know, those days are gone. And me trying to be a badass, I just admit to it. Yeah, I can't drink. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm retired. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, call me a wuss. I'm yeah. out. You know. Well, that sounds like a plan. When we get a little bit cooler, cooler air, man, we'll do that. Let's yes, yeah, God, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget this uh, temperature right yeah, now. That's not uh, drinking on the carport yeah, stuff. Yeah, we're, we're no. going to call it the fall classic. So we'll wait till fall. Yeah. yeah yes. The carport classic. Yeah, that's cool. All right, Gene. Well, we'll cut you loose, dude. This has been awesome tonight. Everybody, check it out. If you're in the Southern Maryland area, you need help on songwriting. Gene's got yeah, a whole, direct message me. A whole selection of packages to accommodate your song, your album, your vision. Contact Gene Quaid. There it is. Thank you, sir. All right, Gene from the Guitar Gurus. We say thank you and good night, sir. Thank you, buddy. Good night. Bye, right, buddy. Brother. Peace. Later. All right. Later. There he goes, yeah. man. Gene Quaid on the show tonight. I'm wow. Sorry, man. We should ask him if he wanted a commercial. Just yeah. kidding. Just kidding. He's I, kidding. He would make his own commercial. Come on. Of course. Yeah, he doesn't is, right? <laughs> that is an awesome thing. He is on, he's on the right track to the way things are going. I think he's on to something that... You're talking about the future. Right. And he's on the freaking doorstep, man. Wow, man. So, I mean, that's cool, man. I, I, man, that's just awesome. Amazing services. Hit him up. Direct message, he said. Direct message. He loves dealing with people individually. Right. And he will get you taken care of. There is a package like Dan said for everything you want to do. Right. Man, I, I really not going to answer all my riff. I guess I'm going to yeah. do it alone. He's going right. to make me go home and mess with something just so I can call him and go, let's try something with this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I want I want I love it. I'm excited about the process thing. I mean, dude, basically, you could just call him up, have lyrics or a riff, and you're good. Yeah. I mean, you got to have something. I mean, usually guys he's calling, it's like, yeah, I get it. It's yeah. all good. But, man, what a show tonight, dude. Great show tonight. Wow, man, we've got a solid... Two solid interviews, but I thought was going to be a 10-minute spot for him just to promote real quick. Turned out to be a gem of an interview in later in the program. Sure, sure. Had a little relax. You know, we got it all in, man. That was our reward for having a, a wonky 
start, man. We had some weird things going on in here tonight. Right. They won't hear about it, but man, the phone system was acting up big time early yeah. tonight. I don't know. How, I, well, I'm going to listen to playback. I think we got it right, but wow, yeah. man. I think we, we might have upset some spirits or something. I don't so. know, man, but wow, dude. Episode 84, the show is done, man. Wow, dude. There this it is. is cool. Uh, let's thank all the sponsors real quick. Go through it. We've got David Higgins from the Southern Maryland Chronicle. He's always sponsoring our show on their site. New site comes out on Thursday. Redesign of the Chronicle, SouthernMarylandChronicle.com. Go check right. it out. Yeah. That's that sponsor. we got Island Music Company delivering the guitar of the week every week. Right. How awesome is it that? I'm living a charmed life every weekend. I get <laughs> to discover a new axe. That's right. So I love them, man. Island Music Company. Go check them out. Of course, we have Sean Kirkpatrick on for Sean in 60 Seconds. He's a big-time guy. He's a personality on the show, and we always want to show him some love. It's a big shout-out, Sean Kirkpatrick. Big time. Cool. Uh, the commercial sponsors, we got Jesse Wickline, Allied Renovations, Christopher Lane Tattoos, and, of course, Cooper Construction. And, right. and we got a new commercial coming up for them soon. That's so right. Stay That'll tuned. Be, yep. It's coming. It's coming. We're going to make it cool, but it's coming. New commercial, Cooper Construction. It's coming right up. But it's all good, man. And yeah. um, I think that wraps it up, right? That does. That That's a wrap and a half, man. I mean, we're oh, perfect time on the episode. Perfect guests. I mean, everything was just great, man. Worked yeah. out great. It was cool. Real cool tonight, man. So, dude, I got, I'm got. i spent. I'm ready to get out of here. Yeah. Right, you ready to go, man? I am. Cool. Well, dude, I think we're going to wrap it up then, all right? It's Guitar Gurus with Dan and Dan. We're Southern Maryland's number one choice for music talk radio in, Southern, in all of Southern Maryland. <laughs> all of Southern Maryland. Maybe That's a little correct. northern neck, a little eastern shore, but we'll just say Southern Maryland for now. Yeah. It's all good, but... We guys will check you next week for episode 85. And just remember, that's the Parker Barrow reschedule episode. That's right. We're going to have actually two guitars of the week next week because we got the Ibanez from the week they were on and the new one I'm going to get up this week. So I don't uh-huh. know how I'm going to play it yet, but we're going to do something cool maybe. If not, we'll pick the better of the two. I don't know. But I'll just do two. It'll be fun. We'll do one in the beginning, one at the end. Sure. So we're going to we're gonna have fun with that one. Yeah. So that's cool, and that's coming up. That's episode 85. That's next week. But until then, we say see you and thank you.